Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about load learner tutorials. We are in control right now in our previous tutorial we understood about how to run a basic schedule scenario and you got an idea that how exactly the configuration can be done designing a scenario and executing that. Now we'll be moving next step ahead of that and running the other type of it which is real world schedule. The real world schedule basically allows you to define the duration of the test and also determine the condition for how exactly the V users will stop the execution that is on what grounds what conditions they can execute V user end function or action. So that's where the real world schedule is different from the basic schedule where basic schedule does not allow you to customize these top V user conditions and define a duration. In real world schedule, you will be provided with the provision to define the duration of the execution as well as the stop V user condition. So let's quickly have a look and understand how to design and execute a real world schedule scenario. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding what exactly is real world schedule test in Loadrunner creating a real-world schedule test and running the real-world schedule scenario. Of course, to begin with, of course, it requires a script to be imported and you can definitely do by launching the controller and we are just using the similar scenario which we used in our previous tutorial to use a particular script which was parameterized to run for three iteration. But this time we won't be running it for basic schedule rather we'll be running it for a real world schedule now this option basically allows you to modify the conditions accordingly and i can definitely set up the way i want to run the user for every single action that is initialize the user and start the user duration and stop user so this time the execution will not be iteration dependent rather it will be duration dependent and during that duration the number of iterations will be performed again and again irrespective of the runtime settings so let's quickly configure something here just double click on initialize and here you can set up whether you want to in, uh, initialize which means running v user in it all together for all the 10 users or you just want to run it in interval. That means two user every 15 seconds. So the graph what you're seeing right now is for one user every 15 seconds, right? But if I say initialize all user and press OK, I would see a particular um, graph here. I think I should be seeing that. Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe you have to come back. Uh, it has to be refreshed. So anyways, let me just show you. So say initialize all V users simultaneously and you press next. The next option is start V user. Okay, initialize V user is not displayed here. So you start V user simultaneously or again in interval so that you have both the choices. Like for example, I say initialize V user simultaneously. That means they should launch and log in in the application all together. But when it comes to running the action, I want them to run in steps of two. So two user every 15 seconds should start running the test. Or you can also configure it the way you want it. For example, initialize in steps, but start together. So that would be something more interesting. So let us go back to this and do that. Uh, for example, launch and login in interval and say apply, click on next and launch or work together. That means start the action part together so that even if somebody logs in, he or she as a user will be waiting for the other users to come and join. For example, if there is an examination happening, then people come at different time to join the examination, but the exam starts at the same time. So just put your scenarios more realistically and you can configure it the way you want it. Also, this is the place that is start V user in real world schedule where you define the number of V users and it's up to you to define them here. Click on apply, go for next. So now you can see the line has become straight because you're saying start simultaneously. Press next and here we define the duration that how long do you want to run them together? So team, remember that the duration here is for executing the action part, not the total duration. Okay, initializing and sign out will be different than this time. So how long do you want to run them? So I said five minutes. So I'll be using that as a part of the tutorial. And let me just reduce it to three minutes so that we don't take longer as a part of the uh, 
as a training session so I'll just apply this and uh, move to the next which is sign off which is stop user and again I can define say for example a different way for example sign off but five at a time and let me see what's the behavior of this so apply and the graph will show you five user in every 30 seconds so if you observe again I have settings here that is initialized to view user every 15 seconds start all 10 view users simultaneously run together for three minutes and stop all view user five view user every 30 seconds so two installments now this test I'll not be fasting it up like I wouldn't be running it fast as a part of my uh, execution window I'll be doing it at the real time at the real time means that means you can observe that how exactly the graphs and other things will be populated so this is due to my previous execution it is in the past state you just have to press reset and even if you don't do that it will just start scenario it will automatically move to down state because right now all your users are resting okay all the 10 users are resting and we'll have this window open so that when we click on start scenario we can see the behavior that two users initializing every 15 seconds running all of them simultaneously so the last person when he launches and login they all will start together okay and then five users logging out together and the next five after that in 30 seconds now you have to observe this table as well as these columns on the top to see the behavior click on start scenario and let's click on the user so you can see now two users are initializing which are here in this column and the eight are down so as far as I have given the instructions it will follow that if it is not and now you can see that initialization has been done and they are not running the test that means they are not in the action part because I told them to start simultaneously okay so right now you can see each two of them like every two users will sign in together but wait for the last person to sign in the moment the last person sign in it they will move all together to action which is the fusion action and simultaneously you can also see some of the graphs being populated that is running view users how exactly it is happening and then the whole scenario hits per second and you can see the response time being populated which will take some time and then you can also go ahead with uh, looking at some of the parameters here and this time we don't see any kind of errors so that's what some of the things are ignorable because they are not in the action yet and our parameters are in action if in case during this execution uh, there are any kind of resource utilization issues that will be automatically updated so oh yeah you just saw that uh, they all started running together the moment the last person signed in and all of them are in run state right now and response time started getting populating for the action which you can see is 6.7 seconds as an average so this is actually good that this is a straight line like all are closer to each other but it all depends on your requirement that if your requirement says it should be less than or equal to five seconds then this is wrong now you can see the hype there is going up and it make it has come down again so you can keep an eye on certain things right here that if you think your scenario is going completely different than expected you can actually click on stop button and stop the execution so that you don't waste your time the reason we are running it for three minutes right now but in real time you might be running it for two hours so just keep some initial observations and then you later come back to see the analysis report so all these graphs will be a part of your analysis and you don't really have to sit and observe them but yeah some critical areas can be definitely observed by in you know by sitting in front of the system to make sure that uh, things are being you know observed critically also there's another graph which will not be populated by default you have windows resources which is like how the resources are being utilized you can always uh, right click on this add a measurement click on add and define the local host as a server because you this you are using this resource for capturing all the details so all the information about that servo will come here and you just have to press ok and the graph will start populating you can see at the bottom there are all the colors which are represented for each of these parameter and everything will start populating in the uh, windows resources graph and you can see and start looking at all the graphs at the bottom as a monitor so the one which are hidden is not displayed and rest all are displayed here so you would see a lot of colored lines coming in this graph now you got the grid and soon after just some of the time uh, you would see the graph being populated as soon as they start capturing the information so generally it is recommended that you configure all your graphs which we also call it as monitors all your monitors before you start the execution 
and later you observe them then you run them so right now they are somewhere close to that so lapse time is 3.29 together run is 2.23 so I think we have another 30 seconds from this test to run just keep observing see your observation is very important at this point of time to make sure that you have a clear understanding that what exactly happens at what point of time and we need to make sure that we have all the information so now you see this error count is rising up I just have to click on this and check if there's something new so if you can see monitor name windows resources cannot create measurement processor processor time and total on machine local host the detail subject of ob specified object was not found on the computer so that means that something which I'm missing I'll try to fix out this information in my next tutorial and I'll definitely show you that what exactly went wrong so this is something which is uh, an error which is not that's the reason you don't see your windows resources graph being populated okay meanwhile we missed that our users have already started signing out and 35 of them have signed out already but you could see that you know one of them could not complete because I told them to sign out simultaneously so one of them was lagging behind and could not actually complete the 31st iteration but that's not a problem we just wanted to observe that if everyone was able to do the same thing or not and this is again like if you see 36 of 36 have been executed because they took another 30 seconds to complete some more iterations so that's all from this particular uh, scenario let's quickly go to the analysis part and again I'm not covering the detailed analysis right now I'm just showing you a quick overview that how the results will populate and we will be talking about analysis in our upcoming tutorials with more details so there is a file here res.lrr which stands for result dot load runner results okay and this is the file which my generator is passing on from controller to the analysis so during the run the controller captures all the statistics in dot lrr file and will be displayed in the graphical representation in the analysis so yeah you can see that though i told them to uh, do that in steps things happen like something this and I told them to sign off five at one time but you can see a behavior here that one user signed off first and then four users signed off together that's the reason I think this first user were not able to complete one user one iteration similarly we have hits per second throughput transaction summary 334 actions were executed that means that many times the execution happened but view user end and view user in it happened only once by each user so only 10 and 10 similarly the response time will show you here initially the response time hiked up to 1.35 and then it come down as an average 2.85 so that was something good which we can observe and uh, this is really good uh, response time because it should remain straight as much as possible so that we get adequate response time well so that's all from this particular tutorial team now I hope you have got a good idea of what exactly a scenario scheduling is all about a real world schedule will allow you to create different scenarios and this is where we say that if I say simultaneously it is volume testing if I go with interval I call it as endurance testing so it completely depends on you whether you are going with volume or endurance and load and stress deal with the number of users so if I go with the desired number of users, I call it as load limit. If I go beyond the requirement, I call it as stress. So now you can observe definitely all the four types of performance testing, load, stress, volume, and endurance. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.